So in the sentence, Sarah thought that Hoggle had betrayed her. We have another case of a, a sentence, Hoggle had betrayed her, preceded by the complementizer that, inside of another sentence. So Sarah thought something. What is it that she thought? She thought that Hoggle had betrayed her. Or in English, we can sometimes leave the complementizer out and say Sarah thought Hoggle had betrayed her. Right. So we call this embedded clause, this subordinate clause, we call it a sentential complement because it's the complement, it's the thing that follows thought, it's a thing being thought, and it happens to be an entire sentence. So the embedded sentence or subordinate clause, also called a sentential complement, what's going on is it's encoding the contents of Sarah's mind, what it is that she's thinking. And so the, the truth value of the embedded sentence can't be evaluated with respect to our world. Like we don't actually know whether or not Hoggle had betrayed her. We have no idea. All we know is that she thought he did. Right? That's what we can evaluate. Did she think that or did she not think that? But we have no idea if this part is true or not. This has to be evaluated with respect to what Sarah thinks. Either she thought it or she didn't think it. Right. So uh, question now, what if a child didn't know this? I mean, this is a particular syntactic construction and has a very specific conceptual structure associated with it. Right. We're talking about mental states of other people. So uh, how do you figure this out? And so what you need to know to evaluate the truth value of statements like these that involve a mental state verb like think and a sentential complement is something like the following. The syntactic knowledge. You need to know that some verbs like think and believe and uh, words like say actually can also take these sentential complements, can take this kind of structure, a sentence as a complement, as an object. And then you sort of need uh, this social cognitive knowledge. You need to know that other people can have beliefs. They may be false beliefs if, for, if, for example, Hoggle didn't in fact betray her, right? Um, but the other people can have beliefs. These beliefs may or may not be true, right? But you know, you need to know that that's a possibility. And the bridge is that there's a connection between this syntactic form and the expression of potentially false beliefs. Like if Hoggle didn't actually betray her, but she thought he did, that's a false belief, right? And so the question really is which comes first? Is it the, the social cognitive knowledge or the syntactic knowledge. And usually we think about the idea is that there is a concept out there and you're just trying to hook the linguistic form up to it. So the social or conceptual knowledge comes first and then you just try to find the way to express it. Now a Worfian idea, or at least a Neo-Worfian idea in this case would be that the linguistic form comes first and it helps you augment your reasoning ability so that you can imagine something you could not previously imagine. In this case, the social conceptual knowledge that other people can have beliefs that may or may not be true, that may be potentially false. And so how do we find this out? This is what a lot of people are interested in. We can find out by testing children's development of the social knowledge and the syntactic knowledge that are linked together with these things.